Hi there, it's Joseph here, uh, Edge Dynamics, making a honing video today. Uh, I've been doing some honing and I thought I'd um, get the camera out and the lighting equipment and uh, make a video just to show you, to show off a uh, stone I've got, which is the, uh, it's a Hon, Nakayama Hon Sweeter. Um, it's beautiful stone and it's quite amazing the way it works so I'll just check that in focus yeah. um, so I've got this razor which is a D Miller and Son uh, it's a Sheffield wedge and it's just for demonstration purposes it's got a bit of a wonky bevel um, and it doesn't, I've yet to get a really, really good edge off this. I mean, I get a nice shavable edge, but not what you'd expect from a Sheffield wedge. So we'll try today, probably for like the third or fourth time. Um, the technique that I'm using, I've done many times. Um, it's really fast and it's quite shocking, to tell you the truth. Um, so I've got my Debardo 1K and it's ready to go. So let's begin. Just wet the surface. Um, I need a bit of a bit of a rock on this. I think it's easier one-handed. So I mean I'm not using any pressure. But there is pressure being created by resistance because it's a 1k and it's cutting. So I'm just watching the water and just trying to make sure I get the whole, the whole of it. I've had some problems with the heel and the toe, to tell you the truth. It's probably why this razor never really hones up very well. But And I actually would have just descaled it and I just left it, left this razor alone. But all my other wedges are honed up to perfection so this is the only one that I had lying around that is fit for a demonstration um, and what I will do is do a few strokes and then I'll kill the edge and the way I kill the edge nowadays I don't use the corner of the stone because I well for starters I've uh, use the Rushi on this so I don't be cutting into that but on my old uh, Chisera 1k I'd actually started to slice through and slice into the corner so what I tend to do now is I try to alternate between three points and I do it on the surface on the edge but the way I do it is I let the weight of the razor determine the pressure so I mean, I've just done that to show you I'm not pushing down on it, but obviously I hold it like this. So if I've got a full hollow, it's going to be really light pressure because it's a light razor. If I've got a heavier wedge, it's going to bear down more because of gravity and the weight, obviously. I don't mean to lecture you on science, but um, I let the razor determine um, the pressure and try and alternate otherwise you'll end up slicing through your stone and what I do with all my stones now is I, I prefer to round the edges I no longer chamfer them or chamfer them or however you pronounce that properly cut you know cut in straight down the side I like them rounded uh, it just looks better and um, yeah so there we go so I've killed the edge and I'll do some strokes I try and work fast so because there's no need for this on the video and I'll wash off the blade and then I'll give it a wipe I always try to use well not try to I always use a, a really nice cloth so this is a beautiful material it's really soft and uh, as opposed to like a manky old towel 
you know, or an old rag that's full of 1k grit and 5k grit and stuff like that. Plus, if I've restored this razor, I don't want the chance of a, something scratching it or so. Why not have a nice cloth there for that? And then I'll check just quickly see what's going on. All right, I could just tell from the way it's gripping the skin. It's just up at the toe, it's not set. Down there it is set. Popping hairs. Okay. So I don't want to be spend too long trying to set this properly properly because when I'm honing a razor I can spend maybe I mean it could take me best part of an hour to set the bevel because I'm constantly killing it and constantly working on it until I've got the whole bevel set with no chips I won't move on I won't move past the bevel setting stone and it can take some time and what I tend to do is I'll do some strokes and then I'll join the edge and then I'll join the edge and I'll do some more strokes join the edge and the reason I'm doing this which might sound a bit crazy to some of you is I'm basically pretending that I mean I'm, I normally home with a microscope but if I haven't got the microscope out I'm pretending that I have and I've looked under the scope and I found a chip I'm not talking loop size microchips I'm talking microscope microchips so times 400 times 600 those you can look along the bevel especially with uh, full hollows German razors uh, new steel even like a TI blade for definite basically let's just say every razor ever made apart from Sheffield wedges they chip really easily so um, let's, I'm pretending that I've seen a chip there which is probably going to be a chip somewhere not necessarily so much on the wedge but I'll use this technique anyway just to ensure a good edge and I want to remove that chip so let's say that tiny chip which could possibly cause weepers on the chin area against the grain um, so let's say it takes five to ten strokes to remove that chip uh, by the time that chip's gone guarantee I've created more chips so what I'm doing by constantly joining the edge is preventing new chips so I'm knocking down the old chip it's getting shallower and shallower and I'm preventing at the same time new chips occurring so that way I would have got rid of that chip there would be no chips and we'd have a lovely apex and then we can work towards a bevel set and this is something that I do with a microscope so if I haven't got the microscope out I might as well just do it anyway because there's bound to be a chip somewhere so let's check this edge now I've just killed it let's just do six light strokes and check see how it's cutting not so much on the all right, not so much anywhere apart from the middle of the blade but as I say this is a it's got a wonky bevel um, and it's a little bit dodgy so try and do something extravagant Just check. Okay. Okay. Not quite at the heel. What a shame. As I say, I don't want to spend forever doing this because it's just for the video. But 
either way let's say this is perfect and I've, this technique um, there you go popping down there it's probably not popping right down there but I don't want to deal with that now because I want to get onto the uh, Nakayama but let's just say the whole thing is perfect for argument's sake and bring out the Nakayama Hon Sweeter now this stone it's got cashew lacquer on it it's got some stuff there there it's got some numerals numbers there and it's extremely dense and heavy uh, it's the hardest stone to date that I've come across um, I did have one scary moment with it I was lapping it on um, on the silicon carbide powder because this just eats this is this is kind of diamond resistant and when you're working with silicon carbide powder if you haven't got enough water you can get really strong suction going and it kind of sucked out a little chip out of there I filled it with glue but the scary thing is is that from that chip there's a line that runs across the stone I mean all these lines run across so in theory I could have actually broke this in half trying to lap it so I'm just glad that didn't happen I've learnt my lesson and uh yeah so I'll just wet it up I've got a DMT325 and it should make quite a slurry quite fast now because I've used it already but first time around you've got to be here for at least a minute doing this to get the stain to release some slurry I mean as I say it's kind of diamond resistant it's the toughest stone that I've ever worked with um, but it's also as I say it's a Nakayama Hon Sweeter and it's as fine as the finest Nakayamas the finest finishing stones this is equal to so it gives edges that are unbelievable it's quite shocking to work with really and the edges it produces as I say they're second to none but you can see you really have to work to generate a slurry you wouldn't have to do this with any of my other J-nets and I did make a slurry earlier with this so it should be slightly damp it should generate a slurry a little bit quicker let's see what we got here there you go we got some and that will do and all as I'm looking for with this particular razor is 14 laps believe it or not so from a 1k bevel set two three six eight twelve Fourteen, and that's it so that would give me a kasumi finish and that would be an amazing edge that's the equivalent of a full nagora progression in 14 laps so when i first got this stone it was just confusing me like it was unbelievable the fact that i couldn't get it to work because i was doing too much so now i know how to use it um i've got a sweeter Nagora stone for it and I've also got a matching Tomo Nagora for it but what's the point if I've used the DMT slurry and had the finest edges I've ever had why bother messing about with other stones but that is it and I don't know to some people that might be unbelievable but as I say I've done this many times I've got a video where I've done this uh, with a cast steel you don't see me honing it but you see me shaving with it and it was one of the best edges I've had all year by far and I then gave that razor out for someone to test 
because it was unbelievable. If I get a really unbelievable edge, I'll give it out. And uh, they've come back to me and said, yeah, this, this drop dead amazing. And that was from 14 laps on this. So that's it, basically. Um, I did have, I had a layer of 88 and a layer of Captain, as I do with all my razors. Full hollows, wedges, anything new, old, that's it, that's how I do it. And thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Cheers.